So I'm telling you that right now, there has never been a better time to get into Mac gaming. In the run up to the end of 2023, we have a horde of native Mac games being released, optimized for Apple's M1, M2, and recently released M3 chip. These include games like SnowRunner, Sonic Dream Team, Stray, Rogue Trader, Grid Legends, and more. And very soon, we're going to have upcoming AAA titles like Resident Evil 4 Remake and Death Stranding, designed to be played best on the Apple Silicon Mac. And it's great that we have so many Mac games coming out, but did you know that many Windows games actually run on the Mac 2 using something called Crossover and Apple's Game Porting Toolkit? And using these translation layers, we can run advanced DirectX 12 titles such as Cyberpunk 2077 and Diablo 4 on the Mac, even though they were never designed to run on Apple's ARM chipset. And this begs the question, if Crossover is so good, then what is the point of native ARM Mac gaming? After all, the Mac gaming library is but a tiny fraction the size of that of the Windows PC, and PC gaming is far more developed and mature. In this video today, we're going to go through the pros and cons and also compare the performance of several games optimized for native Mac versus running the Windows version of the same game through crossover. But before we dive into today's content, let's talk about something crucial, the security of your personal information. Did you know that every year the number and scale of data breaches are skyrocketing? The 2022 annual data breach report reveals a shocking 41.5% increase in victims from the previous year. Your personal information is being aggregated by data brokers and made available for purchase. In essence, your privacy is at risk, sold or published online without your knowledge. Now, the good news is that you have the right to protect your privacy and request that data brokers delete the information they hold about you. But the bad news is that it would take years to do it manually. Now here's where Incogni, the sponsor of today's video, steps in to solve this problem. Incogni takes charge by reaching out to data brokers, handling personal data removal and addressing any objections all automated for your convenience. Protecting your privacy is as easy as one, two, three with Incogni. Create an account, grant them the right to work on your behalf and then sit back and relax. They'll contact the data brokers, manage objections, keep you updated on the progress every step of the way. So make sure to use the coupon code ATDEAL and the first 100 people to sign up are going to get a 60% discount. Now let's go back to Mac gaming. So the first game that we're going to be looking at is the cat puzzle game Stray, which recently released on macOS. And this is a well done port which has been optimized for the Apple Silicon Mac. It makes use of Apple proprietary features, for example, Metal FX. And it seems to run well even on the highest settings at 1440. 40p on my N1 Max chip. But is this Mac port even necessary? That's because for the last few months, it's been possible to run the Windows version of Stray on a Mac using Crossover. So as you can see, the performance is actually quite comparable with the macOS natively optimized version only running about 20 FPS faster on average. Now the colors look a little bit wrong because there's a specific tone mapping fix which is enabled here using CX Patcher, which is a third party patching tool which gives the latest versions of DX VK, Malted VK, and various other fixes too. Now, unfortunately, the performance difference between the native macOS version and crossover is actually further pronounced in later levels. So the native version on the right has nearly double the frame rate of the CX patcher crossover version on the left. Obviously, if you're playing this game on a Mac for the very first time, then please use the native macOS version. There is no downside at all. But if you're one of those people who wanted to play Stray on your Mac earlier, then I wouldn't necessarily fault the Windows version because it runs at a playable frame rate on the Mac. And for a lot of people, that's going to be better than waiting nearly two years for the Mac port of this game to come out. And here we have a similar deal with the vehicle simulator game SnowRunner, which recently had a macOS release. And the Windows version on the left being run through game porting Toolkit's D3T Metal through crossover is actually performing very admirably. Only around 20 FPS less than the natively optimized macOS version running at 1080p medium. This is despite the fact that the Windows version is being run through Rosetta 2, which translates x86 instruction calls onto the ARM chip. And it's also running through another two translation layers, including Wine, which translates Windows into macOS API calls, and D3D Metal, which translates DirectX 11 in this instance into Metal. In this level, the advantages of the macOS release are a lot more pronounced with an average frame rate increase of about 30 FPS, which is very substantial. However, is it actually worth waiting quite a substantial amount of time in order to get these natively optimized Mac ports? After all, with Stray, we're looking at a delay of 504 days, which is nearly two years. And SnowRunner took over three and a half years to come out on Mac. And unfortunately, with these macOS ports, it looks like simultaneous platform releases on Windows and Mac are extremely rare. However, there are exceptions which kind of prove 
remove the rule, which I'll explain in a moment. So this is Baldur's Gate 3, one of my favorite games of the year. And this game has had a macOS port even from the beginning of early access back in 2020. However, on Baldur's Gate full release day, the Mac port was nowhere to be seen, still stuck on early access. And it took 50 days for the Mac version to be updated to the full release. And right now, patch five has been released on Windows for over two weeks now, and the Mac version is still lagging behind. And this basically means that Mac players can't play multiplayer with Windows players. We're also way behind on new features like honor mode, as well as the thousands of bug fixes still available on the Windows version. Thankfully, you can run the Windows version of Baldur's Gate 3 through Crossover, through D3D Metal, and it seems to work pretty okay. The Windows version even has access to upscaling FSR 2.2, whereas the Mac version only has FSR 1.0. And unfortunately, there are no plans to implement Metal FX. Now, obviously, I'd much rather be playing the Mac version of this game, which performs far better than running through a translation layer. However, I still have the Windows version installed on my Mac as well. And that's because I want to be able to play multiplayer with my Windows PC friends. And I also want to carry on my cloud safes from my Windows computer as well. Thankfully, Crossover gives us the option to run that Windows version and the performance is surprisingly good. Even despite the fact that we're running this section through Act 3, which is notoriously difficult for even high-end PCs to run, it's still surprisingly playable. Now, after I recorded this section, Patch 5 for Mac has just been dropped. And this is really great news. However, it is still more than two weeks after the Windows version of Patch 5 came out. And who knows whether future Mac patches are going to be delayed in the same way in the future. So as you can see, optimized Mac ports generally run great because they take advantage of the full power of the Apple Silicon chip. But Mac gamers are often let down because we are treated as second class citizens, begging for the scraps for updates to the Mac ports of our favorite games, often taking months or years to come or sometimes even abandoned and cancelled. Now, of course, many of the native Mac games we have right now never even had the option to run through crossover to begin with. For example, you can't run the Windows version of No Man's Sky due to its use of the Vulkan graphics API. Thankfully, the Mac port of this game released earlier this year is truly excellent and takes advantage of all of the benefits of Apple's Metal Graphics API. Similarly, we even have new simultaneous Mac and Windows releases like the brand new RPG Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader and some of the first bigger Apple Silicon Mac exclusives like Sonic Dream Team, which can't even be run on Windows or Crossover to begin with. So there's still going to be a place for Windows gaming on the Mac no matter what. And whilst it takes substantially more effort and tinkering and frustration to get Crossover working, if you don't mind paying for the license and have some patience, the results are well worth it to get access to way more games than normally available on the Mac. Games like Cyberpunk 2077, GTA 5, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice and Diablo 4 can run really well on Mac hardware, even though their developers had zero intention of ever bringing these games to the Mac in the first place. If you want to find out how to get crossover working, then make sure to follow the link in the description for a full tutorial. Anyway, let me know what you think about the native Mac gaming situation. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.